that will be coming out next year. Mm -hmm. Because when I break it down, uh, I, I don't think there will be any doubt. My only regret in doing the book on movies is that I can't actually take the frames of the, the movies. You know, I'll never be able to get the rights to do that, so I have to sort of write these time codes in for DVDs. Mm -hmm. But when you, you know, so much of this is visual. You know, people don't understand that visual symbolism is a language. It acts like a language. It is predictive. It is coherent. Um, it's not just mind games. It's not collegiate mind games. This is something that is very ancient and uh, is still in use today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. You see it everywhere. Um, and uh, well, let me just say one more thing is that, mm -hmm. I, you know, to me it's like, uh, in America, I don't know what it's like over in Europe, but um, so many corporate logos are sort of becoming more and more solar and, and, and sun imagery. Uh, you know, I wonder if um, there's something, they have something in store for us, you know, <laughs> because everywhere you go, you just see the sun, the mm. sun symbolism on, on even supermarkets, real estate agents, gas stations, everywhere you go, it's just, it's ubiquitous. That's right. I believe it's the it's the same old story as it ever was. To you know, to some extent, uh, it could be that there's something you know, obviously um, new coming into the picture here. But but again, I, since I think that the that the Christian story is basically again a, a reference to to the sun itself, I feel that this has always been the case. And especially I, I considering, I absolutely, agree. I I one thousand percent agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's no, you know, and there was um, that interesting movie uh, Zeitgeist, with the first third of it was uh, dealing with astrotheology. That's right. And, and how do you argue with that? Come on, you can't. <laughs> you cannot argue with that. Yeah. And to me, that doesn't invalidate Christianity. To me, that makes it much more interesting and powerful. You know, exactly. but people are so hooked to uh, the words. You know, they're so they they worship the words that um, they don't see the greater meaning behind it. And I think that's a tragedy. It yeah. really is a tragedy, but you know, maybe they're not equipped to. I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, well, exactly. I mean, again, you can take these myth mythologies and look at them on so many different levels. You can see them as as literal stories, and again, who knows? I mean, at this point, it's fairly difficult for us to either, you know, val validate or say that you know Jesus actually never existed. Uh, I mean, at this point, it's 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 impossible. The stories are there, and but but yet, yet again, we know that there have been um, rewritten scriptures and we know that if we interpret the symbology behind what they've told us about this man you can easily say that no wait a minute this is actually not a man it's uh, actually uh, an allegory for for the sun basically so we're well, in this here's my theory here's my theory let me just interject here i mean i think jesus was a man i think he did exist i think his teachings uh were sort of repackaged I think he was a follower of John the Baptist this is something i'm going to go into very great detail because i think John the Baptist is probably the most overlooked character in history. I mean, people do not realize how incredibly important John the Baptist was mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, I think that Jesus was a follower of John. I think that there was an incredible crossover with uh, Alexandrian uh, solar um, cults at the time. Uh, I think that his story became mythologized, and in actuality, perhaps, maybe was... Um, these, these followers of Jesus were playing out this this real life drama. It was a ritual mm -hmm. to to to, uh, to follow the the solar um, liturgy, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, again, I mean, this doesn't. If you if you need to believe that the, every word in the Bible is true, I mean, I don't have really. I can't have a conversation with you, uh, not you personally, but you know, sure, sure, I see what you mean. <laughs> uh, but if you draw it into this this greater tradition that is so widespread and and has you know there's so many underground streams and currents that you can follow it, it, it almost takes on a, this universality to it uh, mm. that I think is very compelling and very powerful uh, uh, if you look at like I said I was in that played the death of the sun god you know Balder I mean these stories of the sun dying and resurrecting are universal mm. and uh, and very compelling um, and very beautiful too I mean uh, if if you exist where I exist, where you sort of transcend literal literal meaning and you go into the mythic realm, there's there's a, there's a, a real power there. There's, a, there's an amazing power that it's very difficult for me to describe. And there's amazing power, for instance, where just before you called me, I was sitting there talking, you know, uh, writing 
a piece about the architecture of the city. And the first thing you say to me is that um, quote from the book about the architecture in New York City. I was mm-hmm. just writing about that. Mm-hmm. Those kind of things happen all the time oh, yeah. when you, you immerse yourself in this kind of thinking. It, that's right. It's almost magical, <laughs> for lack of a better word. That's right, exactly. And that's why, why it's interesting to, to study, to look about, look on it, to talk about it and to as you say discover it that's that's what it's all about you know it's a it's a new new idea and then and, and again there is this idea that you know synchronicity is potentially uh, on the rise as it were or i mean it might have been there altogether of course but at least the awareness of it with the help of uh, um you know ma- more minds are turning on to it that's why yeah that's exactly you, you understand what i'm saying yeah um, when i read guys like you had jake kotsky on your show What, I go, this is Jung. He doesn't. He probably doesn't even realize that what he's writing about is what Jung was writing about 100 years ago. But more and more people have access to more and more information. And you have the internet where you can connect all sorts of dots all the time. It's an amazing tool. Yeah. But there's something else going on. There's something else going on that I can't explain. And I almost can't describe. But things are happening in the real world that are very synchronistic all the time. And yeah. this is what gives me hope, personally. Uh, yeah, that, people are so hopeless, and they, they feel so defeated and pessimistic. And I've got to tell you, I feel that way a lot myself. I had a very difficult life. I, you know, I have a, a pretty serious illness called fibromyalgia that's very challenging to me. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So my life is not easy, and I, I work very hard. But at the same time, You know, when you immerse yourself in this material that isn't, you know, it's not, it doesn't act like a religion, it doesn't act like a cult, but it's a system of knowledge. Uh, and when you, when you immerse yourself into this stuff, amazing things start to happen. Vistas start to open, you know? I mean, amazing coincidences will follow you around like a lost puppy dog. I really <laughs> believe this, and yeah. I would not be saying this, I would not be going out on a limb saying this to people publicly if I didn't honestly believe this. I mean, that's what gives me hope. You know, yeah. that there is, there is, an, uh, there is uh, an escape. There is an escape from this iron fist that's descending on us. And, mm. and it's, it's, it's an, another realm that goes back thousands and thousands of years. I totally agree. I couldn't, couldn't agree more. And I, you know, again, though, the work of uh, Jake Kotze is, is brilliant and amazing. I think he's also doing something really new and he's opening the eyes of so many people just because of the fact that he transcends a lot of the maybe what you would call you know traditional um you know f- the traditional framework i guess you could say with what you would when you're looking at things like synchronicity for instance uh that synchronicity happens on on all levels and it you know it goes through time it goes through space it's, it goes absolutely. through anything you know you're preaching to the choir my friend <laughs> no question in my mind about that absolutely yeah, that's right you know i want to talk a little bit about because you mentioned the Uh, John the Baptist, which is is interesting here because you sent me a couple of a uh, couple of Im- images uh, that uh, we we could talk a little bit about. Uh, these are from your um, I guess upcoming film project, or at least these are some of the ideas that you talk about in in your new uh, upcoming book uh, about movie symbolism. And in there, on the number five uh, image that you sent me, you have. Uh, you, you talk a little bit about this on with the John the Baptist, um, a solar tradition, and you have three images. Do, uh, do you remember that image? Oh, absolutely, sure. Uh, do, w- 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 do you want to talk a little bit about that? I'm going to link this up so people that are listening can view this right on my website, you know? Oh, uh, when I was writing this book, um, I was sort of looking back to the, you know, the ancient myths and, and ancient events you know, that that were very influential, particularly, you know, say, the fall of the Templars, which we see in the latest Star Wars movie, which we see reenacted in Independence Day and other films. Mm. Um, but the more and more I was looking at this, the more and more John the Baptist just kept coming up and coming up. And it was almost like he was demanding that I pay attention to him. Mm. It, it was uh, astonishing. And, you know, in Freemasonry, John the Baptist is a central figure. The... Uh, Grand Lodge of England was established on the feast day of St. John the Baptist. Um, Mm -hmm. And this is something that is not unique, that a lot of these uh, occult groups, for instance, the original solar temple, which has nothing to do with the the cult group that um, 
was in the news about ten years ago. Mm-hmm. It was a, a, another group of the solar of solar Templars that Grace Kelly was a member of, and they also established themselves on on the feast day of John the Baptist. And there's so this just comes up over and over again in my research. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what is this about? What is this about? And I kept studying it and seeing it in movies. Uh, for instance, that 2001 image, yep. uh, that Star Trek image uh, from that movie Nemesis, which is very much an allegory of John the Baptist, and I'll explain that in great detail in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, the scene from the X-Files where it says, you know, bring me the head of Fox Mulder. Um, what uh, John the Baptist ties into, to me, in my opinion, is that it goes back to Oannes, um, the stories with the Dagon, mm-hmm. uh, but it also to me goes back to Osiris. Um, not a, lot, a lot of people will mistakenly identify Osiris as a sun god. Osiris was actually identified with water, mm-hmm. and all forms of water were associated with Osiris. And you can read this in Plutarch, and Osiris is identified with the underworld. And you know that if you dig below the surface of the, the crust of the earth, you, you get into the water tables. And, yeah. and that that's where those associations come from. Hmm. So there are these archetypes, these basic archetypes that we know throughout history, um, you know, these martyr characters. And they're, they're very much um, father figure martyr characters. And to me, John the Baptist is very much a father figure to Christ hmm. um, that replay themselves throughout history mm-hmm. and um, are universal, at least in the Western world. And very, very powerful and incredibly profound. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is something that is going to emerge. Just as when I delved into this material, John the Baptist demanded my attention, I think that it's also going to start to emerge in our culture. I mean, for instance, Star Trek, Jean Luc Picard, John the Light. Mm-hmm. You see hmm. what I'm saying? John mm-hmm. the Light, the John the Light of the world. Um, <laughs> Not again. Not unique to this. Um, I will lay this out in great detail with at, with so many other things. I mean, like I said, we could talk for months mm. <laughs> about the book. It's going to be a, a tome, but mm. it, I, I think it really demands itself. I almost felt when I was writing that book that I, I, I was a tool. I, the, the material was writing itself for me. It was an amazing, amazing experience. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'm talking like writing four hours at a stretch without taking a break. Mm. <laughs> uh, really profound. Um, the uh, Our Guards Wear Spandex, to me, is a great introduction to where I'm going. It's a great introduction to where I want to take people. Mm. And the next book, to me, will really push them over the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, we, I mean, we got to have you back by then if you're interested and in, uh, talk about it more. You know, oh, I'm absolutely interested. One thing that, that is... Uh, Interesting here is, is uh, do, do you think that again this this has something to do with the fact that I mean you mentioned the the, the free, Freemasons and, and all that but the Templars among others I mean they were big on worshiping the the head of John the Baptist I mean again absolutely is, absolutely you know I think that we're living in a Templar world um, <laughs> and and much I more the Templars are so are, are so it's such a profound thing that is treated as a footnote in history, but... But it's on the rise now. Really, what's that? It's on the rise now, I mean... I, I, well, it's, the thing is, that the Templars essentially invented, you know, modern the modern world. Um, just the fact by creating the banking and credit system. And a lot of people say, oh, they this is all fantasy, this is all mythology, people are just getting excited about this stuff, and the Templars were dissolved years ago. Uh, no, they weren't, and we have lots of evidence that they weren't. And to me, this here's the allegory that you know. Here's the metaphor. Let's say that George Bush wanted to do away with the World Bank. He could probably shut down all the World Bank offices in the United States and, and confiscate their assets here. But the World Bank is everywhere. Okay, the World Bank is in Europe. It's in Asia. It's in South America. It's in Africa. Everywhere you go. 